Maritime Made on Eastlink TV, presented by Nova Scotia Business Inc., because great things are happening. On a windswept island in Seaforth, Nova Scotia, potter Iris Patterson is creating beautiful pottery pieces inspired by the sea. The artist uses a cutting wire to cut the clay. Today she is using mid-smooth stone clay. Each piece is weighed and adjusted if necessary to ensure each one is 1.7 ounces of clay. The piece of clay is now wedged Wedging is done to compress the clay and squeeze out any air that might be trapped in it. Wedging can be done in different ways. This is called ram's head wedging because once wedged, the clay looks like a ram's head. For larger pieces of clay, like this 10 pound piece, a technique called spiral wedging is used. A round working surface called a bat is secured to the potter's wheel. The bat is dampened so the clay will stick to the surface. And the clay is placed firmly on the bat. As the artist begins to center the clay, she uses a good amount of pressure and a wet sponge in one hand. This piece will become a mug. The water from the sponge flows over the clay and increases the glide between her hands and the clay while coning the clay up and down. The speed of the wheel is controlled with a foot pedal, faster for centering and slower for the finer work. Using her thumbs, she opens the clay to the bottom or floor of the mug. Then gradually, she widens the floor and pulls up the wall of the mug. Using her full hands, the artist collars the clay back into the cylindrical shape she desires. Working the clay, she pulls the walls several times to get the desired thickness for the mug. The drinking edge is smoothed with a chamois. With a throwing stick, excess clay is removed from the bottom of the mug. Using a rib tool, she ribs the texture and removes the slip off the outside layer of the mug to make it smooth for decoration which will be added later. The slip is the slurry that forms on the pot while it is being thrown. This mug is part of a series and the potter works carefully to create a consistent shape of each piece so the mugs will be similar. However, all pieces are unique with slight variations. This is the beauty of handmade pottery. Once the mug is thrown, the bat is removed from the wheel and the mug is set to dry. Working on a larger piece, the potter firmly drops the clay onto the wheel and presses it to make sure it sticks to the bat. This 10 pounds of clay will become a large bowl. Allowing water from the sponge to run down the clay, she begins to center the clay with her hands. First using her thumbs and then her fingers, she creates the opening. Extra water is periodically sponged on for extra glide. Too much friction on the clay would pull it off center. The shaping continues with a sponge in one hand on the outside of the bowl and the other hand applying the right amount of pressure on the inside. The clay now has the shape of the bowl, but it's still too thick. Working with a large piece like this is a delicate balance. The wall of the bowl is worked thinner and the artist widens the bowl. Using a large rib, she shapes the inside of the bowl to create a smooth curve throughout the bowl. The rim is smoothed with a chamois. The bat is removed and the bowl is set to dry. After the bowl and the mug air dry to a leather hard stage, they're trimmed on the potter's wheel. Using a trimming tool, the potter trims the excess clay to create an even thickness throughout the piece. Using her fingers, she burnishes the bottom with her fingertips for a smooth, finished surface. Trimming the large bowl removes excess weight off the bottom and helps define the final shape. The potter shapes the foot of the bowl and the trimming tool is rolled across the clay to ensure there are no sharp edges. 
Using wedged clay, the potter pulls handles for the mugs. Working with water, the clay stretches as she squeezes and elongates it. Using her thumb, she applies pressure to create the shape of the handle. The handles are hung to dry for a few hours. Once they are considered leather dry, the potter can work with the clay to attach them to the mugs. The mugs and handles are kept under plastic to slow the drying at this stage. The handles are cut, shaped, and measured to length. The mug and handle are scored and slipped to help them adhere to one another. Slip is brushed onto each contact point and using firm pressure, the handle is attached. The clay is smoothed evenly for a strong attachment and to create a smooth transition between the mug and handle. The Sea Star Pottery Studio name is signed into the bottom of the mug. And at this stage, the mug and the bowl will air dry for about a week. Any decorative underglazing is done when a piece is completely dry and before it's fired. Although the design for this mug is done completely by hand, the potter maintains a consistent pattern for the series. Three shades of blue make up this jellyfish design. At this stage, the pottery is loaded into the cold bisque kiln. It's programmed to run for up to 13 hours to just under 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. After the first firing, the pottery is called bisqueware. In this stage, the pottery is hard, but still porous. Now it's time for glazing. First, the potter brushes wax on the bottom of the piece to keep the glaze from adhering to that part. Glazes are mixed according to each recipe. The potter weighs and mixes ingredients on site. Glazes are made from natural materials and each potter has their own secret recipes. Glazes are well stirred before each use. For this design, one glaze is poured into the inside of the mug. Then it's dipped halfway into a different glaze. The bottom is wiped off and the top half is dipped in the lighter glaze color. A third glaze is splashed on. This will create a beautiful disruption in the glazing pattern. Lastly, the top rim of the mug is dipped. After firing one more time, the mug will be the same color and pattern as these. The firing sets the glaze and changes the colors dramatically while bringing out the shine. If decals are added to a piece, they're added after the glazing. The decals are soaked in warm water and carefully applied to the surface of the pottery. For this series, the artist has designed decals and printed them on a laser printer. The ink in the laser printer has iron oxide in it, and when fired, only the iron oxide remains on the glaze for the perfect look.